Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Maria Garcia de la Banda, and I'm a professor at Monash University in the Faculty of Information Technology. Great to see that everyone managed to find a seat. And in doing so, you just solve a combinatorial optimization problem. And what's that? Well, it's a problem when you need to make a choice. In this case, pick a seat among a lot of different possibilities. All the seats in this lecture theater. Now, possibly when you enter, how do you do that? Well, the first thing that you probably did was to eliminate any seat that was already occupied. That's what we call a constraint. Only empty seats can be part of a solution. But even then, I'm sure that there was a lot of different places available, different seats that were empty. So how did you end up where you are? You probably put your preferences or the organizer's preferences on top of those constraints, and perhaps you came in a group, and therefore not looking just for any empty seat, but an empty seat that had enough empty seats around to sit together. Or perhaps you like to be up close and personal, and you ended up up the front, where you could hear and listen properly. Or perhaps you don't like disturbing people, or you like to stretch your legs, and you ended up on an aisle that you can come in and out easily. These combinatorial optimization problems when you need to make a choice, pick a seat, satisfying certain constraints, only empty seats, and optimize a particular objective function, your preferences, is something that occurs every day in our lives, inside and outside work. It's pervasive. We are pretty good at solving many of them, but there is some that we cannot solve. Navigation tools is something that I'm sure you are extremely familiar with. What's the problem here? I want to drive from point A to point B. Constraints are quite simple. We need to be on a road, hopefully in the right direction, start in point A and go all the way to point B. Those are the constraints, but even with those constraints, there's a lot of different possibilities available still. Um, Google here is providing several, but in fact, you can go from Eklund to um, Monash University via Sydney. That is a possibility. So what do you do on top of all those constraints? You put preferences. Now, some navigators help, uh, allow you to say, give me the shortest path, or give me the fastest path, or give me the path that is the cheapest, I don't want to pay any tolls, or the greenest path, the one that uses the least amount of fuel consumption. That's great. Um, these tools, as I'm sure that you have experienced, are fantastic. They have improved enormously people's lives. They definitely have improved mine. I have zero orientation sense, and I get lost all the time. But using this, I now can go any city in the world, and I'm reasonably confident I can get where I want to be without getting lost 100 times or having to ask a 1,000 people. So that's fantastic. But as I'm sure you also have experienced, they are not always provide you with the best solution. Right? So if you know the neighborhood, you probably can find something that is a bit better. But the difference between an optimal solution and the solution that they provide is not that different. The slower path might make you wait for, I don't know, a few seconds and a minute, and that's not going to kill you. Unless, of course, you're at the back of an ambulance in a critical condition. But in general, they're fine, and you, know, you can cope with it, and it's perfectly good. So one could say, that having automatic tools that solve these combinatorial optimization problems is fantastic, even if the solution that they provide is not an optimal one. It's just, you know, it's okay. And I would say yes and no. Yes, having automatic tools that solve these problems is fantastic, but not all combinatorial problems are solved automatically. And even if they are solved automatically, the impact of having a not so good or not a high quality solution can be quite amazing. Think, for example, you are in the enviable position of planning a holiday, and you're actually planning a holiday to Seville and lots of things to organize, right? You need to first figure out how you're gonna get there. So among all the possible um, combinations, well, boat, plane, etc., what do you want? You want to be there reasonably fast, reasonably direct, and not spending a fortune, right? Still, lots of different companies, flights, um, try, uh, can you go via Singapore, by Hong Kong? Lots of different possibilities. Once you get there, you, might, you definitely want somewhere to stay. Something that is reasonably comfortable, close to the action too, 
and not too expensive. Again, hotel, hostel, Airbnb, um, service apartment. There's a lot of different possibilities. And how to get from the airport to this place? You can use, in Spain, a train, a bus, a metro. You can rent a car and then use it afterwards. How to solve this thing is something that we do quite often, but there's no automatic solution for that. And yet, solving is quite easy, right? We do it every time. You, just, you could just go to Google and pick the first thing. Just pick the first flight, the first accommodation, the first transport from the plane to this place. Not a problem. But chances are that the quality of that solution is going to have an impact in your pocket. You probably end up paying hundreds to thousands of dollars more. You might spend a lot of time lost in some airport waiting for something, or you might have a lot of sleepless nights when the apartment or the place that you got, that you hired, was not all that good. So ha sometimes having a not so good, a poor quality solution can have a massive impact. And yet, you know, the fact that there's no automatic um, way of solving this as yet, well, who cares? The world has more important things than you know, helping people on holidays. That's true. But there's many, as I said at the beginning, these problems occur in many different areas of life, and not just for individuals, for, for organizations, for governments all over the world. And sometimes the uh, impact of these poor solutions is just really, really high. Think about you are, for example, uh, an airline, a big airline company like Hunters, and you need to schedule all your planes and all your staff divided into crews for those planes in such a way that they um, cover all the agreed routes, all the routes that you have agreed to, to cover, satisfying all the constraints of human resources, a distance, gas, uh, fuel, etc., and reducing costs, reducing delays, etc. The difference between a high quality solution and a poor quality solution might mean that Qantas has to buy three more planes and hire 200 more people, which is pretty significant. That is millions of dollars and a lot of uh, uh, regulations to satisfy. And yet, you know, you think, well, it's only money. As, you know, it's money, it's a company, they can pay it. Well, yes, but sometimes the impact is more personal. Imagine then that you are a cancer institute, like the Peter McCallum, and you have to figure out how many radiation points to put on a tumor so that it covers as much as possible of the tumor, minimizing the effect or the impact on the healthy cells around, and not just how many points, but where exactly those points in the tumor are gonna be, and how much radiation you're gonna provide for those points. The difference between a bad solution and a high quality solution might end up saving the lives of people or improving the quality of life until they die significantly. And that is very worthy. So considering that they are everywhere and they appear in every single uh, area and they are so important, they can have massive impact, you would expect optimization technology to be the talk of the town. Right? Everyone knows about it, everyone is using it, everyone knows how to contact the people that are going to make their life much better. And yet, it is not. It is what I call the great unknown. Most people nowadays have heard about data science. And data science encompasses many things, including optimization. But the focus right now seems to be mostly on machine learning, on data mining, on data analytics, things like that. Optimization is not even part of the picture, definitely not part of this picture. It doesn't even appear there. And yet, there's a huge amount of industry, governments, organizations that are making do with really poor solutions and who could do much better if they had optimization technology. So, what's going on? You might think, well, perhaps the technology is not yet there yet. Perhaps it's not good enough. But it is. Mathematicians and computer scientists have been working for a very long time to make this technology really, really good. Yes, it is true that you might not be able to find optimal solutions for all problems. These problems are incredibly complex and they grow exponentially. They might start with hundreds, very quickly they go into the millions and very quickly the choices, the amount of possibilities is bigger than the number of stars in the universe. So yes, computational power is an issue. 
But the technology is definitely there for finding much better solutions to everyday problems. So why is it that we're still with the great unknown? Well, I think that this is mainly because of two things. The first one is expertise. The amount of expertise that it takes for a person to go from the problem description to a solution using optimization technology with a high quality solution is actually a lot. In fact, you probably need at least one PhD to be able to put together the modeling languages, the algorithms, and all the software tools that are gonna to give you a really high quality solution. And that is just a little bit too much expertise. The solution is to have more research, more people, more students coming into this incredibly important area and making sure that computer science makes the advances that it needs to do to connect the mathematical theory with the practical tools so that people without so much expertise can look at the problem and generate a solution that would be of high quality. That's number one. The number second issue is what I call the great unknown, is to stop optimization being the great unknown and making sure that it's in the spotlight right there. The second problem is that most organizations, as I said, haven't even heard about this. So we need to connect organizations with optimization. We need to make shown really bright lights on optimization and make sure that all these companies and all these governments know that optimization technology is there and is ready to make the problems better, to give them much high quality solutions that they have. One of the most satisfying things that I've done in my research career happened last year when I was on a sabbatical, or I was so lucky, a sabbatical in Spain with my partner who happens to also be a professor in computer science making for fantastic dinner conversations. And we were contacted, he was contacted by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. In particular, for, by the Income Management and Fund Analysis Section, who has the enviable position of having to distribute all the donated money to the different refugee needs, which, as I'm sure you know, there are many, often very urgent and always very critical. So you will think, given that the aim is to spend all the money that is donated, that that's pretty easy, right? You just get all the money and start spending on all those incredibly important things until you run out of it. Unfortunately, not, not, not the case. Not so easy. Why? Because the money that is donated usually has string attached, meaning the money is donated for a region or a country or perhaps a particular crisis, and you cannot transfer money from bucket of donation to bucket of donation willy-nilly. You have very, very particular rules of, if I've donated for this, then what can I move it to afterwards? So you might end up with something like 25 million surplus in Syria, while you still have 50 million that you cannot, you know, that you need, but you cannot find in, say, South Sudan. That's a situation you don't want to, to be in. The United Nations do, does have a software solution that helps them solve this problem. Uh, it doesn't use uh, optimization technology, or rather didn't use the optimization technology. And last year, this solution would have left 500 million, 500 million euros unspent. They're donated, but not being able to get to there. We spent a month emails, going, trying to understand the problem, trying to understand what exactly it is that, that they would need it. And work that could have been reduced, you know, if you compress it up, it would have been about a week. In a week of work, using our optimization technology, which is based on a Minisync language that we have developed here at Monash University, Melbourne University, and Data61 in collaboration, we managed to reduce from 500 to 100 million. And that meant that 400 million euros were able to be spent on the needs of all these amazing people that are suffering so much. And for me, that was the best reward my career could have had, much better than a grant, a paper, or anything else accepted. And that is why we need more researchers in this very important field, and more organizations to know that they just need to contact optimization experts and they will have amazing results. Thanks for listening.